Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back for chapter four of the book of Revelation. I'm here again with my lovely mother-in-law, Bev, who's gonna be joining us for all of them. Um, today we are starting in on really a new section, the second section of the book of Revelation. And uh, again, we're talking about the literary structure of the book. Seven sections, we just went through the first in chapters one, two, and three. But now we're starting in on the first chapter of this second section. So I think if we were to sum up what's happening here in this section, it's really Jesus' plan to save humanity, but more than that, it's him redeeming and buying back God's family Absolutely. is really what's happening in this mm -hmm. section. And so now opening up in chapter four, we see John having a vision from Jesus about God's throne room. So straight into the heart really of heaven where we're going now at this point. John had just heard Jesus talking to the church, yes. those seven letters to the churches. Right. And in there he had just said that he holds the key of David. Mm -hmm. He'd open a door to the kingdom of God. And now he looks and he sees that open door, in, hmm. that door open to heaven, okay. the kingdom of God. So he's literally in a vision seeing this door going to heaven, but that, that is open. Mm -hmm. And this is where this vision is taking him. In heaven. Okay. Yes. Wow. It's that same way of hearing something and looking and seeing what it is. Okay. We'll see all through this book of Revelation. I was going to say that same theme that we've seen before. You hear something and you turn to look yeah. who's saying it, where it's coming from. Exactly. Okay. And so now he hears something again. He hears Jesus' voice like a trumpet say, come on up here. Oh, interesting. Come up here. Okay. I'm going to show you some things that are going to take place soon. John looks and sees the throne of God. Hmm. And seated on that throne is the God the Father himself. Wow. And he's described in the picture of a symbol of a stone. Okay. A carnelian. Carnelian. A jasper first. Okay. And then a carnelian. What color is carnelian? Well, <laughs> jasper is generally red, and okay. carnelian is orange red. Oh, interesting. Okay. And these are the first and the sixth stones that we'll see way down in Revelation that are foundation stones, hmm. the 12 foundations of the walls of the city of the New Jerusalem. Wow, interesting. And then in a circle all around this throne, John sees a rainbow that's just emerald green. Hmm. And all happening in the throne room of God. Yes, this is all happening in the throne room of God. This wow. whole vision wow. is in the throne room of God. Wow. And this emerald green rainbow represents life. After all, on the third day of creation, remember God made the land, and on the third day, he made the green mm -hmm. vegetation. Right. So all of his creation had food to eat hmm. so they could have life. Mm -hmm. The first time we see the rainbow in the sky is right after the flood, Right. Noah comes out of the ark, and mm -hmm. he sees this magnificent rainbow. Right. And God said to him, this is a promise to you, that when you see this rainbow, there will always be seed time and harvest. Mm -hmm. There will always be food mm -hmm. as long as this earth exists Right. for my created beings. Right, right. It's amazing. Originally, it was a promise from God. The rainbow in today's society, at least where we live, tries to take on a much different meaning. But really, originally, it was God's promise to man. So, so here's this green rainbow all around the throne hmm. showing that this is the center of life itself. Hmm. The next thing we see is around the throne are 24 thrones okay. and 24 elders sitting on those thrones. Okay, now that sounds unique. Now, 24 thrones around God's throne that are filled by elders. Now, who are these elders? Who, who are these people that we're talking about? Well, elders are always, in the Old and the New Testament, they're the leaders kind of of the church. Okay. Uh, the, of the Israelites in the Old and the church in the New. They're yeah. all called elders. Okay. And so these are representatives of God's people. Hmm. And why 24? Well, it's 12 from the Old, 12 from the New. 12 is the number of the kingdom. Yes, okay. Brought okay. together to 24. So the Old and the New are all here wow. together, all as one in Christ. Wow. Around the throne of God. Amazing. They're seated on the thrones, they're dressed in white, and they're wearing gold crowns of victory. Hmm. Just like the overcomers. Interesting. And from the throne, we hear... Lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, those things of judgment. Hmm. Like the giving of the law and the coming of the Lord. Sounds just terrifying when you think <laughs> it about is. it. <laughs> God is the judge and he's judged these as his. Wow. wow. So, and before the throne, now in front of, now there's another section. This is okay. everything that was around the throne. Okay, there. so so far we're, we have the throne, we have these 24 other thrones surrounding it. 
that have elders in, the, in mm-hmm. these thrones. Mm-hmm. And now in front of the throne is where we're looking at next? Right. Okay. And there's seven lamps, which is the sevenfold spirit of the Holy Spirit. Okay. In front of the throne. Hmm. And basically that Holy Spirit ministers to us on earth. Okay. And I'll show you how that is. Now these seven lamps are different than the seven lampstands from before. Exactly. This it's is the Holy word. Spirit. Okay. This is the Holy Spirit. Okay. Okay. Glad you clarified that, Ben. Mm-hmm. And also before the throne is a sea of glass as clear as crystal. Okay. Now the first time we see this sea of glass is a very interesting time. In the Old Testament, Moses had just gone up and gotten the law, the Ten, the Ten Commandments, Commandments. Ten okay. Commandments on Mount Sinai. And after that, he's confirmed the covenant, doing a sacrifice and the blood sprinkling over the Israelites to confirm the covenant with them. Moses took Aaron, Mm -hmm. the high priest, and his two sons, as well as 70 elders from Israel, up onto the mountain Mm -hmm. where God was. Okay. And there they ate and drank and participated in the covenant. You know, when you have a covenant, you always sit down and have a meal. Okay, okay. So that's... So they're up there in the presence of God, all these guys. Yes. Participating, having this covenant meal before the presence of God. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. But there was a barrier between them and God. Hmm. Under God's feet, there was something like a pavement of sapphire, clear as the sky itself. Hmm. Remember that second day of creation Mm -hmm. where Mm -hmm. God divided the waters? Yes. Down here with the waters up up in heaven? Yeah. And the expanse between he called sky? Uh Uh-huh. This is that. It's a dividing. This sea of glass Mm -hmm. kept them away from being face-to-face with God himself. It's almost kind of like when I think, you know, I've I've heard people say before, like, oh, I just just wish that I could talk to God, you know, like I'm talking to Mm -hmm. you, kind of like like, like Adam did in the Garden of Eden, Mm -hmm. this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And really, this almost seems representative of the fact that even though, you know, we know God is spirit, that heaven, it really is there. But it's like in a different dimension, in a different realm. Even though we are spirits as well, we mm-hmm. reside in this physical body, and there is that barrier. I, I, I like that sea of glass mm-hmm. almost representation of d- a divide between those two. And you can kind of see through that glass to God, hmm. but yeah. not face to face like yes. you and I are, yes. are right here. It's like how Paul said, we, we see through a glass but darkly. We don't get the full picture yet of what is on the other side of that. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. Amazing. Told you, it all ties together. (laughs) (laughs) And next we're going to get into the very interesting part that is so misunderstood by so many. Okay. The four living creatures. Oh man, I know these. (laughs) These used to terrify me when I was a kid. No, I remember. I remember when I was a kid, somebody drew a picture and I'm sure they had good intentions of one of these four living creatures before God's throne. And I thought, if that thing greets me when I die, (laughs) I may, I don't know what I'm going to do. So, all right. But they're not scary. They're they're good things. Okay, so so they're not scary. <laughs> not at all. Okay. So let's read about them. Okay, all right, all right. So this is Revelation. This is verses 6 through 8, kind of picking up in the middle of verse 6 here. In the center, around the throne, were four living creatures, and they were covered with eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion. The second was like an ox. The third had a face like a man. The fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even under his wings. Day and night, they never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. It sounds terrifying to me. (laughs) All right. We need some clarification on these things. What what are we talking about here? What are we... I mean, it says it's living creatures... (laughs) Well, What's to, going on? To find the symbols, we've got to look in the Bible. Okay, fair And enough. that means going back to the book of Ezekiel, the first chapter of Ezekiel. Okay. All right. Now, for those of you who don't know, Ezekiel is a book in the Old Testament. He was an Old Testament prophet. In fact, mm-hmm. that, that book is found right before the book of Daniel from Daniel in the lion's den. But Ezekiel was really, he, he had a similar story to Daniel in that he was taken captive to Babylon, but he really served as kind of a, a, a prophet and a priest. But a lot of things that we find in there were really foreshadowings and kind of prophetic things of things that were to come Mm -hmm. that he wrote about hundreds of years before they ever happened. So in Ezekiel 1, Ezekiel's having a vision. Okay. And the first thing he sees is heaven opened in the vision of God. Does Hmm. that sound kind of like what we're talking about here? Very familiar. Yes, very similar to this. Okay. And there's a windstorm out of the north, the top of the earth, you might say. Okay. An immense cloud 
lightning brilliant lights. And in the center of the fire was a glowing metal. And in the fire were four living creatures. And the huh. four being the number of the earth. Okay, So right. this has to do with the earthlings. Yes, yes. And in the form, these living creatures were like a man. They had four faces and four wings. Hmm. Now, they're Feet gleamed like burnished bronze, just like Jesus in his vision. Okay. That's their foundation. Okay. And each had a face of a man, a lion, an ox, and an eagle. Okay, so Four faces. clearly there is there's something happening here between these two books. <laughs> exactly. Okay, okay. So to understand these symbols, we have to understand the Israelites. Okay. They were there were twelve sons of Jacob, mm-hmm. whose name was turned Israel, became who God changed his name from Jacob to Israel. Yes. And these 12 sons became the 12 families or the 12 tribes of the Israelites. Okay. Who were the people of God. Yes. In the Old Testament. Yes. God had told Moses, just build a sanctuary. Build a sanctuary in the wilderness so I can dwell with the Israelites, with my people. Okay. And all around this... Say this is a temple. Okay. This is a... The the tabernacle that the Israelites traveled with. This is a tabernacle... Moses made. Okay. And all around it are the Israelites. Okay. Kind of as they traveled and moved around, they would, they would camp, camp around, around it. Around, yes. As they okay. traveled, they would camp around the sanctuary. Okay. Three tribes on each side. Hmm. And there was a leader tribe on each side. And so there was a leader here, 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 and here. Four. Okay. And these four creatures represented these four leaders. So the creatures that Ezekiel is describing... The traits of each one of those, there was it was kind of representational mm-hmm. of the leadership of these four areas. Yes. Okay. The interesting thing of it is the difference between Revelation and Ezekiel is we see four different creatures. In Revelation. In Revelation. Okay. But in Ezekiel, each of the four creatures has four faces. And so they're kind of combined in Ezekiel, but in Revelation they're almost a Split bit more out. separate. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the The creatures each have four faces in Ezekiel. Okay. They have the face of the man, and on the right is the face of the lion. On the left is the face of the ox, and in Mm -hmm. the north is the face of the eagle, Hmm. a flying eagle. Okay. So each each one of these areas kind of had their own representation, but still in Ezekiel, he's seeing all four of those combined, all four faces on one creature. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So let's look at the first one in the book of Revelation, okay. which is the lion. And we know now that that lion was on the east, mm-hmm. and that tribal leader was Judah. Hmm, okay. Now, significantly on the east, because that's where the sun rises. Hmm. The sanctuary faced this way, so they, it's like the sun rises, comes out of the east, and goes through the door into the sanctuary. Hmm. And of course, I think Lion of Judah. The I've Lion heard that. of the tribe of Judah. Yes. Wow, interesting. Jesus would be was that son that was promised to King David. Wow. Who came through Judah, hmm. who would sit on King David's throne forever. Oh my goodness. Okay, so that's the lion that we have over in this section. Now, how about over here? In the west, we have the ox. Okay. That is the tribe of Ephraim. Okay. Which is the second born son of Joseph himself. Okay. Now, Joseph, of course, going back to the Old Testament, it's Joseph and what we would know as the coat of many colors. So um, really, really brief overview. He got sold into slavery. Again, if you haven't read all this, just go into Genesis. You're going to see a lot of things that we're talking about Mm -hmm. here that will make sense. When you Mm -hmm. hear about like Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, it's all back here. But Joseph, so his, one of his two sons was Ephraim, Mm -hmm. but Joseph got sold into slavery in Egypt by his own brothers out of jealousy, Mm -hmm. which... Looks like it's the end for Joseph. Like yeah. life is over, but he actually, because of God's favor, rises to second in command behind Pharaoh in Egypt, mm-hmm. has a vision from God about, you know, that a famine is going to come, there's going to be no food. So he sets all this food aside, all these things. Mm-hmm. Then his own brothers eventually come and buy food from him, not realizing it's him. They're reunited. It's a beautiful story, but because of what happened with Joseph, yes. because of God's favor on him, he actually not only reunited his family, but he saved them, really, yes. in a sense, from that famine. So Joseph gets a double portion, goes to his father and says, Bless my sons. Okay. And, and Jacob crosses his hands and gives the firstborn blessing to Ephraim. Now, I remember that being peculiar. Yes. So Jacob being Joseph's... Hang on. Jacob being Joseph's father mm-hmm. was supposed to bless Joseph's two sons, but when he does it, normally you would do it like this. Mm-hmm. He and does it like this. Because the right hand 
those on the firstborn's head. Wow. And in that sense, Jacob adopted Joseph's two sons into the family because they were born of an Egyptian mother. Hmm. And basically, there was the tribe of Ephraim and Manasseh, hmm. those two sons in the 12 tribes of Israel. Wow. Okay. So Jesus, like that ox, became the sacrifice, that sacrificial animal, hmm. and died so we could have life, just like Joseph who saved his family. The third creature we see mm -hmm. is man. Okay. Now the tribal leader is Reuben. He was the firstborn son of Jacob. Okay. And yet he lost his right to the firstborn inheritance. Hmm. And so Jesus, this being the third man, the living life comes again, you see. Mm -hmm. The third one, even mm -hmm. the third creature. Uh, Jesus is the firstborn, becomes that firstborn son of man. Okay. And he receives back that firstborn son inheritance, provision, the whole family of God. The fourth creature is in the north. Okay. And that is Dan. Again, still looking at the layout of the tabernacle here. Right. We're now up top here. Okay. Where Dan is. Okay. Dan was the firstborn son of Rachel's servant. Okay. For the number of the earth, north being right over the top of the earth, you might say, over yeah. it all. Yeah. So an eagle represents soaring and all the positive things. Like, right. Makes like sense that it would be the in American the north. American eagle yeah. in the yeah. north over yeah. the whole earth. Right. <laughs> yes. And Jesus, who's the indeed the firstborn son of God, became a servant mm -hmm. in order to redeem us back to sonship. Hmm. Interesting. Now, because, so. because Dan was actually born... Not necessarily of one of Jacob's wives, but Jacob actually had a relationship with one of his servants. Him being a son came out of that relationship. Yes. Okay, wow, yes. interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's but, the last one with the eagle. So the that, point of all these four living creatures, what they really represent, they're living creatures in the old and in the new. They're the living ones, not the mm -hmm. dead creatures, but the mm -hmm. living creatures. They're all God's people, God's family. Hmm. Old Testament, New Testament. Okay, okay. But we're going to look at the one in Ezekiel because it kind of tells us a few differences between the Old Testament mm -hmm. and the New. Okay? okay. In Ezekiel, it's the Old Testament family. Mm -hmm. But in Revelation, it's God's people, the redeemed. Hmm. Now that makes sense because, again, we see that those visions, the vision that John is having in Revelation and this vision that Ezekiel had in the Old Testament, they're similar but a little bit different. Okay, now let me, I, I, we talked about this a little bit before, but let me go ahead and, and describe for you all that are watching basically what it was that Ezekiel saw. Because, again, this is a very weird vision to have. And, and I think with visions, you have to understand, they're, they're not necessarily real life. It's not, when you're talking about these creatures, it's not that there's, you know, this real weird looking animal that's out there or creature or anything like that. But it's really what he's seeing and what the symbolism is behind it. So what, so what Ezekiel sees is he sees these four creatures that we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. They're all moving forward together. They have four wings. Two of those wings are actually, are actually touching each other, but as they're going forward, they have an appearance almost like they're on fire, like burning coals. Mm -hmm. But he also says that next to each one of these four creatures is a wheel. Mm -hmm. Now this sounds weird, but okay, so there's a wheel next to each one of these creatures. Inside of that wheel is almost what appears to be another wheel. Ezekiel mm -hmm. called it a wheel within a wheel. Mm -hmm. And they're bright. They're shining almost kind of like, like a crystal or a diamond. Mm -hmm. But then one final description that he gives, and it, again, it sounds weird, but it's very unique. He says on the outside rims of these wheels are eyes mm -hmm. all around them. But then he also notes that the spirit of these creatures, just kind of like how when you and I are born again, mm -hmm. we receive that spirit of God, our spirit comes to life. The spirit of these creatures is not actually in their mm -hmm. bodies it's in the wheels that are next to them. But wherever they go, wherever these creatures are going, wherever the Holy Spirit is leading them, mm -hmm. these wheels come along with them, almost just like they're kind of glued to their side, so exactly. to speak. But now there's one more description that's really interesting that Ezekiel gives uh, about kind of a barrier, so to speak. Yes, above their heads okay. was that barrier, the sea of glass. Interesting. So same thing that we see in Revelation that was below God's feet. Above their heads is this sea of glass. Yes, and the 70 elders, that same sea right. of glass. They right. couldn't approach God. It was a barrier between them getting to God. When Moses, Aaron, and those 70 yeah. elders went up, that That's same right. barrier of that glass. That sea was still there. But they could look through that glass. Mm -hmm. It was clear as crystal. 
And through there, they could see a vision of Jesus. And that vision is very similar to the first vision John had in the book of Revelation. Wow. Chapter. Huh. So it was the, they, they could see that something was there. They could see that something was coming, but and they it, couldn't reach it yet. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. Now, so that's Ezekiel's vision. So now if we come back to Revelation, again, where we've still been studying in chapter 4, how, how would you compare or contrast those four living creatures with what we just read about? Well, these four living creatures in the book of Revelation, they're right in the center around the throne of God himself. Wow. There is mm. no barrier between them and the Father. So the, that glass barrier, it's nowhere to be found when we're in Revelation. Well, it is. It's before the oh, throne. Oh, it is. It is. Yeah. You're right. You're right. It's, it's still, still below the God's... Throne. Okay. But the creatures are now right with the Father. Nothing is separating the creatures from that. Okay. Exactly. They're standing hmm. right there. They're okay. right there right with the Father in the heart of it, right around the very throne of God, mm -hmm. right up close to the Father's heart. Wow. Wow. You know, I like the idea of the living creatures. They're no longer dead. They've crossed hmm. from death to life. These okay. are the living creatures. They're, and these creatures are covered with eyes all over them. Mm -hmm. And those eyes are so significant. And they have six wings. Mm -hmm. And those oh. six wings are covered with eyes in okay. contrast. Now, these ones have six, but when we read in the Old Testament, they had four. Four being the number of the earth. Oh, wow. Okay. Six is the number of man. Hmm. Now, this six represents the... New man, the new creature. Wow. Adam, the first one, was created Good on the grief. sixth day of the week. Wow. These now have the six wings. Huh. They are the new family. Wow. Unbelievable. From that last Adam, they're the new family. Coming back a little bit, just one more thing on those eyes. Can I mm -hmm. mention one more thing? Yeah, yeah. It covers all of them. They cover their wings. It's even under their wings. There's not even a hand. Of, in the Old Testament... In those Old Testament, there was a hand of man underneath the wings. Yes. Man's in hand. Ezekiel's vision, in Ezekiel's there was a vision, hand under the wings. Okay. A hand of a man under the wings. They had to bring an offering mm -hmm. of sacrifice, looking forward to Jesus coming. Just like we saw Abraham and Isaac yes. and Jacob and they Cain and Abel. All these guys something. were always sacrificing things for... Okay. They had to in the old. Hmm. But in the new, there's just eyes. It's wow. all by faith in Jesus Christ. Wow. Not a thing we can bring. Wow. There's no darkness at all in these four living creatures in the book of Revelation. Wow. They're totally filled with the light of God. They see things totally clearly. When you read about it that way, and you compare what Ezekiel saw with what John is seeing, if you just read it on the surface, it sounds like, what in the world is happening here? But when you understand it in that context, it's really a beautiful picture of of the family dynamic and how that has changed now with, the, with what Jesus did for us. Exactly. Wow. It's the old to the new, hmm. foreshadowing the truth of what we are now. We are one with the Father again, totally righteous and holy. All of God's sons and daughters, the Old Testament and the New Testament, united in wow. one family. As creepy as I think this has sounded the whole time, it's really a symbol of us. <laughs> it is. It's okay. a symbol of us. All right. There's nothing to be afraid of. <laughs> Of okay. us, and it's just so positive. We're all old and new, united in one family. Hmm. The barrier's gone. We see Jesus right there. Wow. One with the Father again. Hmm. No wonder day and night the four living creatures never stop saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Wow. They are continuously overwhelmed and awed by God the Father. Yes. There's a conversation I had with a friend. And I think of back to that sometimes of like, you know, what will your, your reaction be when you ultimately meet God face to face, when you actually get to hug Jesus, you know, <laughs> like, it's like, I mean, will you cry? Will you be able to stand? Like, I, I mean, will you just be shocked out of your mind? Like, and, and I think the reaction is, it's just, you're in total awe of God's presence. Absolutely. Which is exactly what we're reading here. Wow. And, and so I think it's really appropriate, Ben, that we end this study with reading the last three verses of the book. Yeah, I this like that. chapter. Okay. Cha uh, verses 9 to 11. You know, you would never know it. This this chapter is actually 11 verses long with all <laughs> that we just covered. But I, I think that's what's amazing is that, I mean, only being 11 verses long, yet there's still so much in here. So, okay, let's go ahead and read it. If you, if you have your Bibles, it's verses 9 through 11. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever 
and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. Wow. Isn't that awesome? Hmm. You know, I love that picture of God because while we know that God is love, mm -hmm. he is beyond words, beyond what we could mm -hmm. describe. He is powerful. And I Absolutely. love that it conveys that about him. There's no equal to God. Just an incredible picture that the Bible shows us of him in his throne and in his power. Amazing. Well, we've just seen that vision of God on his throne surrounded by all his family. Yes. But tomorrow, mm -hmm. we'll see the key character in this vision. Okay. Jesus the Lamb. Wow. All right, coming up in chapter five. Hey guys, well, thank you so much as always for joining us today. Um, man, it is a blessing to be able to go through this with you, Bev. So thank you so much. Well, come back tomorrow on Wednesday for chapter five. Again, we're still gonna be covering this second section of the book of Revelation. Tomorrow it's about Jesus being the Lamb of God, one that you do not want to miss. Make sure you come back tomorrow for that. Hope you guys have a beautiful day wherever you're watching this from. We'll see you back here tomorrow.